In past videos, we've talked about pre-processing your images, but how do you decide which subframes get pre-processed? There are several reasons why we might want to exclude some of the frames we've acquired. Tracking issues, clouds, a very low airplane completely obstructing the target, just to name a few. How do we decide which frames to keep and which to discard? PixInsight gives us two primary tools to make that determination. One is a manual process and the other is automatic. Unfortunately, due to limitations in the automatic tool, we need both to get the job done. Let's start with the manual tool. You can use Blink to quickly skim through your subframes looking for anything that is obviously wrong. Start by loading the images you want to check into Blink. In this case, we have blue and green frames. You can do this once per filter if using a mono camera, but you don't have to. For our purposes here, it's perfectly fine to load all the filters together into the same blink process. Once loaded into blink, click this button to compute an automatic STF for each image. By doing this, each image will be displayed on its own rather than using the screen transfer function computed for the first image. Unfortunately, Blink always defaults to the other setting. Now, use the arrow keys to step through these images. We're not looking for anything subtle here. We're looking for frames without any stars or frames with trees or buildings. If you find you accidentally included a flat or dark, just continue. But if it really is a light frame without stars or with some other major problem, we need to delete the file. It's not going to have any value for integration and the next process to do the automated approval, subframe selector will fail if any frames do not have stars. Of course, if you have a whole sequence of frames that are obviously bad, you can eliminate them here. In this case, for our blue frames, trees start to enter at frame seven. So we'll delete all the blue frames from same frame seven forward when we finish here. Now we're into the green frames. All right, so let's go delete those files. Unfortunately, Blink doesn't give us a good convenient way to do that. We'll come over to here and delete all the blue frames. Oops, that's a flat. All the blue frames starting with frame seven. Now that we've weeded out the obvious bad frames, we can switch to subframe selector. First, we need to add in our frames. Now we need to enter our approval expression. The idea here is to eliminate any subframes that don't meet your quality standards. 
The exact expression you use will depend upon your telescope and camera and how picky you are. In my case, I want the FWHM to be less than 5 and the eccentricity to be less than 0.6. With my equipment, those seem to be the upper limit of badness that will produce acceptable results. While the eccentricity might be true for you, the exact FWHM will depend on your exact combination of equipment. You can see here in the subframe selector graphs that the light gray, dark gray area shows the first standard deviation worth of distribution for that particular set of data, and the lighter gray shows second standard deviation. We can see that a few frames with red X's have been rejected. Let's take a look at the FWHM graph. Nothing here is greater than 5, so they weren't rejected because of the size of the stars. But if we look at eccentricity, you can see that that's why they were rejected. If we were being really picky, we might actually reject anything over, say, 0.53. But I don't think there's a need to be quite that picky. Um, by the time you get to 0.6, things are very visibly at a round. But at least in my case, anything up to that, by the time it's integrated with a lot of other better frames, seems to work out OK. The other thing we should look at is the stars graph. You can see we have a few frames that are fairly low in terms of stars. Those were probably due to passing clouds. If you had anything too low here, I would add an expression here to remove those stars. Something like that. And that did eliminate at least one more subframe. Now there is one other odd thing here. But before I get to that, let's continue talking about this expression. The keywords here that you can use are well documented in the subframe selector documentation. I won't go into them here, but I will say that SNR weight, uh, the expression that's based on the signal to noise ratio, is probably not one that you want to use for approval purposes. When clouds come through, SNR can actually go up from the point of view of the camera. And so those expressions, or those subframes rather, that look good via SNR weight could actually be bad. In that case, I think STARS makes a better proxy for determining whether those frames are good or bad. Now let's return to this graph here for the STARS. Obviously we were looking for things that are low that were outliers. That would be an indication of clouds. But we've got a couple of other frames here that are significantly higher than the others. What's going on here? Well, to find out, let's sort this list by stars and make sure you have descending. So now, you can see if we look at this by stars, we have these. Let's double click this frame to see what's going on. If I can get that out of the way, if we stretch that, we can see something happened during this frame. Either a wind gust or a cable tug caused the stars to be doubled. So we don't want this frame to be included. Let's take a look at the second one. Same thing happened here. But the third frame is fine. So if we wanted to do that, we can just make an expression to exclude those. In this case, we want the stars to be less than a thousand. 
and now you can see those two frames are rejected. We also could have come up here and selected both of those and hit toggle approve and that would have put an X there for us as well. Now that we have our set of frames that we want rejected defined, we can actually get subframe selector to do that rejection for us. First, let's select an output directory. Um, what I do is go to the directory where I have my subframes for that night, and then just create an approved directory in there. Change the routine to output subframes and apply. Two things to be aware of while this runs. If you open subframe selector and you only have this window, hitting this FX button here will open the expression window and hitting the graph button will open this window. So you may need to open those. And that's it. Subframe selector has gone through and written all of our good frames into this approved directory. There are two things I wish PixInsight did that would streamline this even more. I wish PixInsight allowed us to delete bad frames directly from Blink. I also wish that subframe selector wouldn't fail if it got a frame without stars. Either of those would make this process even easier to handle. I hope this helps you in your pre-processing. For me, it really simplified my workflow and made my life simpler. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. Take care and clear skies.